peace abound. It's in the name. It's in the name.
time say I Come on, sing it out, sing it out. Come on, lift your hands and sing it out. No one else is worthy, Lord, but you. Tell him I exalt. On your way back to your seats, why don't you tell two or three people, he's worthy of our praise. Come on, tell them, he's worthy, he's worthy of our praise. I exalt thee, Lord. I think we ought to clap our hands for this worship team, these musicians. Very good. We appreciate you and the hard work. Working hard, practicing. I appreciate that you practiced before you got up here. Didn't just get up here and wing it. How many believe we ought to give our best to the Lord? I'm turning your attention tonight to 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, since I was coming to Arkansas, I decided I want to preach something you've never heard about before. Some deep revelation story. Some guy who hasn't got much airtime at youth events. So I'm going to preach about a very unfamiliar portion of Scripture. Some of you will figure out that's a joke in a second. 1 Samuel 17. Thanks, Brother Smith. Thanks to this great team. I got taken to Onyx Coffee today. My. Wow. Tell you what. I feel ready. I feel ready. Thank you, Brother Gaddy, Brother Sullivan, this great board. Thanks for letting me be here. Verse 40 of 1 Samuel 17. Brother Galloway, that's good preaching today. It's good preaching. Cool thing to me about Brother Galloway, I, I love his preaching, but I like just being around him. But Gaddy, I know, <laughs> you know, there's some people I really like their preaching, but I don't like them. <laughs> you ever met anybody like that? Don't look around, but you know, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really, anyway. Uh, if, you, if you think you're called to preach, why don't you try to be likable also? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Galloway's a good guy. Verse 40. Verse 40. We're talking about David. Everybody say David. Come on. Yell David. Hey, David. What did David do? Well, the Bible says, and he, he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in his in a scrip and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the philistine what was that philistine's name goliath most of you know it philistine came on he drew near unto david and the man that bare the shield went before him and when the philistine looked about he saw david he disdained him because he was just a youth just a young person ruddy fair countenance good looking little jerk Philistine said to David am I a dog about to be dead as one hey am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves he acknowledged the sticks but he did not acknowledge the stone hmm. Philistine cursed David by his gods the Philistine said to David Come to me. I'll give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. Then said David unto the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Brother Galloway, you preached about it today. Mm. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. I will smite thee. I'm going to pull your head off your carcass. It reads kind of like that. I'll give the carcass of the host of the Philistine this day under the fowls of the air to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You know, that's the reason we're doing this. Just in, you, in case you thought youth convention was to try and keep you saved, wrong. We're doing this because we want Arkansas to know there is a God in Arkansas. We want Cabot to know there's a God. Come on, we want Bentonville to know there is a God. I know there's a Walmart, but there is a God. Ah, want them to know there's a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord. And he's going to give you into our, check that, our hands. Our hands. Not mine. I'm not fighting this for my own personal credibility. One of the worst things that ever happened to us was creating a David complex in the church. It is. The worst part about this story for me in youth ministry is that we kept preaching looking for Davids when really what we needed was all of Israel to bind together and fight. The worst part about this story for me is that the Israelites allowed the Philistines to determine how the battle would be fought. The Philistines said, send me a man, and the Israelites went along with it. And you can talk about geography, and you can talk about culture all you want, but if Israel would have got its head in the game collectively, they wouldn't have had to worry about sacrificing people individually. And if we in youth ministry would stop trying to get one David at a time, 
need a radical revival of all hands on deck. And so tonight I'm not preaching for one of you. I'm not reaching for a few of you. I'm reaching for every young man and every young lady in the building that will make a resolute determination. I'm going to fight for God. Because I'm ready to fight, Brother Galloway. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready, 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 ready. So with that thought in mind, I want to preach to you tonight about a pocket of rocks. A pocket of rocks. Turn to five, six, seven people and tell them for some reason he's preaching about rocks. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for the dynamic worship. I pray that you'd help me to articulate with wisdom and clarity the word that I feel. I dip my bucket into a well that I have drawn from before. I feel so inspired by you to preach from this. I'm asking that you would help me, not with the eloquency of speech, but under the anointing of your spirit, to be able to relay what I feel for this district. I pray that you would speak to our hearts and minds, and when it touches somebody tonight, I pray that they would not sit on their hands or keep an amen in their spirit but that they would be responsive to the word of God I ask it in the mighty name of Jesus and somebody shout amen Amen. you may be seated oh it should not be A memory that I hold with such affection. But it is. You know, we've got certain memories that, that, uh, you know, they shouldn't be as funny as they are. But they're just funny. Some things are devastating at the time, but they're really funny when you look back. For me, this was funny in time and out of time. I was just a young sectional youth representative. You have a great group of sectional representatives here in the Arkansas district. You are blessed. (laughs) Blessed. Several of them are hunters, and so you know you're in good company. Some of them are named hunters, so you know. I... I was just a young and impressionable representative. And I was there at the sacred Buckeye Lake campground in central Ohio. I was standing, having a conversation just around the outside of the tabernacle with someone who was a great voice in my life. He was a a mentor so it were to me and we were having a conversation when all of a sudden we began to notice this repeating metallic thunk just kind of a and it just it wasn't consistent it wasn't It was about every few, three, four, five seconds. It went on long enough that finally he said, we probably should go see what that is. I will never, young people, forget Rounding the corner as a young, only around 20 years old. I know that's not young to some of you. To others, that's barely born. Hey, you know who you are. And I am with this great leader in the district. And we walk around the corner. And when we round the corner, Brother Smith... There is a young boy there on the campgrounds, the child of one of the workers, 
who is reaching into his pocket and he is throwing rocks at the brand new vehicle of the guy I'm talking to. <laughs> I know I shouldn't like it, but it wasn't my car. I remember standing there looking at the boy and then looking at him. You ever tried to catch somebody cuss? <laughs> I thought somebody better call an ambulance. Somebody call the police department. Little boy's about to die. <laughs> 911, what is your emergency? Get here quick. <laughs> I remember watching that guy. As he looked at him, he knew I was younger and impressionable. That boy ought to thank God I was there. <laughs> He's good and grown now, but he wouldn't have been if I wouldn't. <laughs> I could see his face getting red. Young man, put the rocks down. <laughs> I was doing this here. <laughs> and the reason it's still funny, again, it wasn't my car. <laughs> I think we can all associate a little bit with that little boy. We've all been a little mischievous at times. I bet there's a few in here that have broke out a window with a rock. I don't know if it's discernment or suspicion, but I feel it. Who in here could associate with having a rock in your hand and trying to skip it? Who can remember the first time you tried to skip a, skip a rock and it was pitiful? How many of you in here, you're just incredible at skipping rocks? Put your hands down. That's the kind of thing you brag about. We have counselors in the back after service. I'm just kidding. No, some of you are good. You know what you are? Country. That's what you are. Country. <laughs> some of you tuned me out right there. Sorry. Skipping those rocks. I love when I was a kid skipping rocks. Some of you are those people, you don't skip rocks. You're the people that when other people are fishing, you throw rocks. There's a special place. <laughs> All different kinds of people in here associate with the text. There's there's different ways of associating with the scripture and when a narrative is particularly written well and it has similarities or, or things that we can place ourselves into the story, it is easier for us to process. The average young man in this room, if we had to ask you one of your favorite Bible stories repeatedly through the room, it would be David and Goliath. We love that he cuts off Goliath's head in the end. That's cool. I don't care who you are. But they got our attention when David reached in and grabbed the rocks. Because cutting the head off of the giant is not as attainable. But putting his hand in and grabbing the rocks is something that almost everyone in this room has done at one point or another. You've held a rock in your hand. There's different kinds of significance with all different types of stones and rocks. I have certain friends of mine that love to dig in the rocks, not not children, but grown-up children that love archaeology and love to go. I've got one friend that his idea of a perfect vacation is flying to a dusty place on the other side of the world and spending all day with a handkerchief covering his neck, digging. I said, bring me a souvenir. <laughs> Take me golfing. 
I was able to be in Paris, France with my wife. And we went to a place called the, I think it's called the Louvre. Some of you connect, correct me later. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Got to go a couple times. Saw over 350,000 different types represented, different types of rocks and gems and stones. And you can go to the symposium and see over 10,000 different kinds of emeralds. Those are the kind of stones that might help you pay off your church program. I can remember a handful of years ago, maybe 10 years ago or so, I was going to go get to see a very special rock for the first time, Plymouth Rock. Boy, if that wasn't a letdown. Who's ever been to Plymouth Rock? Some of you have, you just can't even remember. It was that forgettable. I can remember how excited I was walking up to Plymouth Rock. I was going with the district superintendent there, and I kept saying, man, I've always wanted to see it. I knew I was in trouble when he started saying, now don't get your hopes too high. What are you talking about? I was expecting like the, the great stone of Gibraltar, right? I'm, I'm thinking that the waves are going to be crashing against it. He said, no, 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 no. Think smaller. For those of you that have never seen Plymouth Rock, when I finally walked up to it, it's a tiny rock that was so weak that when they tried to move it, it bust into. And it's got this black little cage around it like it's in prison. Talk about a letdown. David, you grabbed our attention when you reached for the rock. And that's what I want to preach about here just a little bit tonight. I want to liken some of you to the rocks that David gathered that day. It's just the way my mind works. The way that I I look at Scripture, I love this story. I, since I was a young man, I have loved this story. But I've always wondered about the five stone deal. If you've heard this story, and preachers and pastors that are in the room, you know (laughs) these stones have become the most stretchy stones (laughs) in all the text. Well, I believe that David grabbed four extra stones because there were additional brothers. Okay. If your pastor preaches that, you just say amen. You want to know why I think he grabbed four more? In case he missed. Because I don't care how good a shot you are, we all miss sometimes. Brother Gaddy, you're one of my favorite preachers. But I bet every now and then. <laughs> I bet you (laughs) grab me another one next Sunday. (laughs) You know it's true. Your people wanted me to talk to you about that. I'm going to tell you, I've had times when I was ready to preach. Boy, I got in the pulpit, and I did everything I could, and I wound it up, and I let it fly, and the giant stood there. We all miss sometimes. So let me take a preacher's pause to tell you, if you measure your success simply by when you miss, so what they told you they didn't want to come to church with you? Get up, shake yourself off, and invite somebody else to come to church with you. Let me talk to the young person. You finally got your chance. Let me talk to you. Finally got your chance to give a fiery five. 
I, I just, I, I think, yes, Jim. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Samuel, turn to your. No, no, no. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And you get done, and your mom said, baby, you did so good. You did so good. You're a natural. You're anointed. Ooh. Ooh, baby. It's the same mom that when her kid sang off key, hey, post it on the internet. Mom, don't do that. Church of Life will pick you up. <laughs> but hey, young man, this room that's filled with preachers, the first time we stepped to the microphone, we didn't knock it out of the park. We barely knew what we were saying, and nobody in the room did. But I got news for you. If you miss, do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, but nobody clapped. Well, why don't you pray until they do? Why don't you read until they do? Why don't you get that new version up and read it until you know what you're... Try and try and try and try again. And I'm going to help a bunch of you. Don't try to be a singer if you can't sing. I just, I just want a solo. No. You can't know. And some of you don't know and you need a close enough friend to tell you. Singing might not be for you. You hear me right now. You don't have to be a soloist to make a difference in this kingdom. You don't have to be a preacher to make a difference in this kingdom. How about those of you that run a camera? Ten years ago, we'd have never known what a ministry this was. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a singer. I'm not. If you're an artist, be the greatest apostolic artist that we have ever seen. If you got a landscaping company, your church ought to look like the Rich Carlton. You ought to be the most anointed land. I don't care what your last name is. I don't care if you got a pedigree. I don't care if you can preach or sing. I want to know, are you willing to be proficient at whatever God has called? Come on, when David showed up that day, his brothers didn't even think he belonged. You're not a warrior, David. You're not a soldier, David. No, but I'm the best sling. I'm the best stone slinger you've ever seen. I know you think I smell like sheep, but I've been fighting private battles, getting me ready for this. Now let me let me just pause for one second. In case any of you thought that I just gave you a license not to be a preacher. Because some of you are called to be preachers, but you won't get your act together. And some of you are called to be singers, but you won't live holy enough to be qualified. You know every Taylor Swift lyric. Posting on the Instagram. Got your kissy face. You could be the greatest thing that happened to that youth choir. 
Come on, you're a member of the speech club at school, but you ain't got the Holy Ghost tenacity to bring up the gift of the Holy Ghost in one of those speeches? What if people make fun of me? I know they might make fun of me, but what if I hit? What if I do? What if I actually knock this sucker right between the eyes? I know my brothers don't like it. I know Saul can't understand it, but I feel a little, I feel, I feel, I feel a little something. Come on, you better get ready, Arkansas young people. This is the day and this is the hour for you to come out of the shadows and let the world know who you are and what you've been practicing for hey forgive me if you need to but I've been living for God for the last 20 years waiting for a moment like this COVID is not taking the church down COVID has set us up for the greatest revival and the greatest miracle Other churches are shutting down and the Pentecostal churches are getting them. We're taking them over and filling them up. <laughs> While nobody was around, David, David was on the backside of a meadow. <laughs> <laughs> setting bottles up on the fence post you're going to need to work on that here <laughs> you don't think he ever missed you're goofy if you don't think David ever missed, you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. He missed until he didn't. He missed until he found out what kind of stones work. He missed until he found out just how to let it go. He found out if I let go too early, I'll miss it to the right. If I let go too late, I'll miss it to the left. But if I wait on the right timing, some of you are frustrated because your pastor won't let you do more. But the truth is, they know when they've got. If they let you go right now, you won't even make it through college safe. He learned when nobody was around. That's why, Brother Galloway, when they probably, so I was like, at least put my armor on. I like what you said today. That was good. I wish you hadn't said that. I'd preach that right now. I want to go with him in battle. <laughs> and they're looking at him like, what are you going to take? Brothers are just mad. Why are you here? I hate you. But the problem was, if you read this whole text, the Bible says every morning they'd get dressed for war, they'd walk to the edge of the battlefield, and the Bible reads that they would shout the shout of war. Because every army would shout right before they went into battle. But the problem is, somewhere along the way, they would walk to the front of the battle every day, and they would shout like it was time for war, and then they would turn around and walk back for lunch meat. Because somewhere along the way, it became more about the shout than the fight. Say what you want to. There's a lot of young people that are a lot more about the shout than they are the fight. I want us to be good shouters, but I don't want us to be professional shouters and pitiful warriors. But the truth is, they were defeated in their own lifestyle. And David was a confrontation to mediocrity. Hear that. David was the confrontation to mediocrity. And when he showed up, his brother... I don't even know why they're letting him speak. 
Look at him. Little. Oh, I'm good looking. Cut your hair. You stink. You smell like sheep. Go home. Why are you here? Just give the cheese. Just give us the bread and go home. People of Aminadab, is that your brother? Oh, shut up. Eliab, isn't that your little brother? David, go home. David, go home. He's like some of you that are just now trying to date and you got a younger sibling that always wants to crawl in the car. Can I go? Can I ride with you? Can... Go home. Mom. Mom. And your mom's like, you're taking your brother. You're not going unless he goes. And your little brother's like. <laughs> How you like me now? <laughs> I'll be in the back seat. And little brothers do annoying stuff like turn their light hand check. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Hand check. Hey, let's let's take a picture. The little brother's trying to get in the picture with all three of you. <laughs> let's take a big brother's like, go home. I hate you. How many in this room you've ever wanted to kill a younger sibling? Be, look at the room. I knew I felt an aggressive spirit. How many of you ever fought with your siblings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Siblings get into it. Anybody in here got a sister besides me? You ever been waiting to get in the bathroom? You almost done? Anybody, any other teenager in here ever put your face on the door? Are you almost done? Anybody ever said a little something like this? For the love of God, get out of the bathroom. I just curl it my hair. I just curl it my hair. And then when they finally open the door, they like stomp out. Don't lie. You wanted the karate chop. hi -yi. So let's not be too much on them. They didn't like, they were irritated by him. He was the little sheep watcher. And now going to walk up. We preach it because it preaches good. Is there not a call? How annoyed are you if your little brother shows up and says that? Is there not a cause? I'm going to give you a cause. I'm going to knock your cause right off of you. Come on, this is the real part of the text right here. They were heathens. No, they weren't. They were irritated. But here's the deal. David had developed things in the private they didn't know about. If you think you're going to get all your developing done while you're in the youth group, and around the youth group. And if you wait on camp and youth. If you think that this three hours a year is going to be your development. And you wonder why your giant won't fall. It's because you're spending no private time. But if you learn how to get alone with God when there are no young people around and there are no brothers around and there are no sisters around and you say whether anybody likes it or not, I've got to learn how to hit the mark. Whether anybody likes it or not, I've got to learn how to touch heaven. Whether anybody else reads it or not, I've got to make sense of this word. There are giants that must fall and none of them will fall. Unless I learn how to cultivate in private. I want you to lift your hands in this room right now. And I want you to pray that God would baptize you with a private love for him.
Now hear me. I want you to be the greatest worshiper in your youth group. But if you dance in public at your church, oh, back your toes up, then you better have somewhere at home that you touch heaven. And if you're going to go to camp and you're going to act like Holy Hector or spiritual Susie, then you better be living at your home church. Come on, we need less plastic Pentecostals and more private Pentecostals that learn how to touch heaven when nobody else is around. What if nobody sees it on Instagram? Oh, this ain't about Instagram. What if nobody sees this on TikTok? Huh? This ain't about TikTok. I'm trying to touch heaven. So here he is. Be seated, be seated. So here he is. He's done the whole armor thing, doesn't, put the, doesn't do the armor, doesn't work. It'd be like me trying to put my coat on case and it wouldn't work. Doesn't put that on. He says, listen, I don't want to toot my own horn. <laughs> but there was this lion. Come on, at some point that's cool. If you kill a lion, you tell everybody you know. How many young men in here you would post if you killed a lion? How many of you would post if you killed a bear? I'm telling you right now, I'm telling everybody. I'm calling people I know don't like me. What are you doing standing over a bear? What you doing? Yes, I am. No, you're not. FaceTime me. <laughs> Connecting. <laughs> How you like me now? <laughs> I think David had to tell him, listen, there are victories I've won when you weren't around. And I know you think I'm a nobody. Here's the amazing thing about David that we need to talk about a little bit. When you know that you're somebody, it doesn't matter if other people think you're a nobody. And I'm not talking about false ego, and I'm not talking about unrighteous, ungodly self-confidence, but I'm talking about a holy confidence that I've been with God and watched him do some things through me that were private victory. I know you think I'm a nobody, but you weren't there the day the bear came in amongst the flock. Nobody was there, but God was there, and I was there. I still got some of his fur in my pocket. I, I carried a little something away with me from that. You weren't there the day the lion showed up, but I was there. And it's the reason why some of you are going to be powerful preachers. Because nobody else was there when that little girl who wanted to ruin your ministry tried to crawl up on you. And you told her, I don't... I don't engage in traps like this that are going to ruin my... I'm going to preach like I feel right now. Come on, I'm talking about Holy Ghost, apostolic young ladies that when he tried to make the move on you, you knew you were called to be a missionary one day. And so instead of letting him lay hands on you, you smacked him across his old f Can I preach like this? Can I preach like this? Let me preach on behalf of every daddy in this room. Young ladies, don't you let some young man lay his hands on you in an ungodly way and rob you of the next 20 years or 30 years of your life. That's right. And so he had these, be seen, please, so he had these private things. And so here they're watching him. And David said, no, 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 I do it. So let me go, let me go. And what does he do? He walks to the stream. His brothers the whole time, where's he going? What's he doing? Why is he going to the water? I don't know. Why is he he's so stupid? Why is he going to the water? I don't know. Imagine you're the older brother, and here he goes. How are you?
are you feeling if you're Eliab and your little brother goes to play in the water? <laughs> David, go home. And he's reaching down in. And they're wondering what's he doing. But you got to understand, some people can't figure out what you're feeling for because they can never get farther than the surface. Surface spirituality is not going to work in this day and age. How you look when you post is not as important as what you look like in your heart. And here he goes. He's feeling around. He's feeling around. And he's choosing him out five smooth stones. Where does he find them? I'm going to tell you where he finds them. He finds them in the flow. He finds those rocks that used to be rigid and used to have rough edges that have probably broke off the hillside and trickled down over time and they made their jagged edged way into the flow of the stream. But over time, with enough exposure to the flow, those things which were once unusable have now become usable. I promise you this. If you want to be usable in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to learn how to get into the flow of the Spirit. Why do we... Where's, where's Britain? Where's Sister Scott? Where's she at? Just yell at... Yeah, okay. So we've done some camps together. We've done some... There's a difference between singing and flowing in there. There's a difference... We've been to places. I've been, I've been to church services that felt more like concerts. How, shall, how far should I go? With this? <laughs> you ought to sound good, but you should not be so driven by clicks and tracks. If your music is so canned that there is no room for a move, I'm already in. I might as well go. We're not trying to create platinum out of albums. We're not trying to get millions of followers because of our sound. We're trying to get a flow of the Spirit so they're right in the middle of worship. Some young person that walked in with the rigid edge of depression begins to hear the singing about the name of Jesus. Come on, we begin to let the music flow. That's what you might not like it, but that's why I like in our music sets when there's a little bit of leaping and a little bit of shouting and a little bit of worship. If you can't remember the last time you bumped into somebody. Huh, worst thing that could ever happen to the church is social distance. Every now and then, I want to be jammed in. I want the crowd to be so good that I, I just knock some of the rough edges off you. And you knock some of the rough edges off of me. I, I promise you, as sure as I'm standing here right now, Brother Gaddy, there have been times in my life in a worship service I did not feel like worshiping. Yeah, very true. Yeah. There have been times I did not feel like even going to church. You probably shouldn't say that. It's the truth. Much less worshiping. I have went to church before with my mind made up, Sister Gaddy, I wasn't going to worship. No. Not doing it. And then they play that song. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you play that song? How not work? And then somebody next to me stands up. <laughs> Sit down. So and then they stand. <laughs> you never stand up. Why are you? St <sighs> then you don't want to be the one sitting down. You feel like me right now. Sit. Mm, fine. I've been in services where I didn't want to worship God, but thank God I was in good company. And I was like one of those rocks in the stream. 
I had some rigid edges from the week. I had some rigid edges in my mind, but the, the rocks around me got in the flow. And when they bumped up, up against me, it made me recognize, wait a minute, he's been too good to me. He's been better than... What am I doing sitting here like he's not worthy of my praise? We need apostolic services that cause us to get up on our feet, that cause us to give our very best in praise. We need apostolic worship services that get us in the flow of the Spirit. Hey, Brother Galloway, isn't it true? I think a few of us are in the same text thread. Every now and then I have a day where I'm not feeling spiritual at all. Really? Mm-hmm. I know you think I just walk up holy. Try to get in the bath and the water part. <laughs> but I'm just normal. Every now and then I have a day. And it seems like if I'm ever having a day like that, somebody in one of those threads will post something about the goodness of God. I'm not responding. Buried 42 people. I don't feel like responding. Somebody else will say, yeah, this ha And before I know it, he's a good guy. Exclamation point. <laughs> There's two times to praise God. When you feel like it and when you don't. That's why you need to get close to people that'll get the rough edges off of you. If everybody in your circle allows you to be the worst version of yourself, then you need a new group of friends. You need people in your... You need people in your life that'll challenge you to be more holy. You need people in your life that'll challenge you to be more prayerful. You need people in your life that will challenge you to be more godly. Dave, David reached into the flow and he pulled him out and he started walking. <laughs> now listen I know that all of us have had a moment how many you can sit down and stand up it don't matter whatever have you ever found like me have you ever found that when you really feel in the Holy Ghost like you feel 10 foot tall like bad to the bone have you ever said things in the mic or in the altar that later you were like hmm <laughs> I thought you had. I just wanted to talk to you about it. No, I'm just kidding. I've been there. I've been there where I was like, whoa. I've been, I've been in that place. But can you imagine putting your sandaled feet into the dew-filled meadow and striding across? Because at some point, you got to walk away from the people who aren't willing. Even if it isolates you. Now, I'm irritated by it because I wish they'd have went with him. But we needed this moment and God needed this moment. And he walks up to him. But I've always wondered. Because in youth ministry, I've done everything I can to get everybody involved. And so I've always wondered about those other four rocks. He's got five stones. Everybody say five. How many does he use? Uno. Interpret that for your neighbor. So, so many of you did it. That was us. One. He said one. That's what he said. I took a half semester of Spanish. Uh, Muy bien. And one stone, he reaches in and he begins to swirl this. Here it goes, slingshot. And one, can you catch? One stone. I would have loved to have been there sitting in the bleachers with a bag of popcorn when he hit.
What would you have done? I'd have choked on the popcorn. How sweet would that be? Watching David run up to him. Popcorn spilling on the floor. What's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, he's getting a sore, baby. He's getting... <laughs> kind of gross, but I like it. <laughs> Tell me you wouldn't have liked that scene when all the ladies are like, Saul's killed his thousands, David is tens of thousands. All the guys would be like, yeah, cut his head off. Cut his head off. My problem is those four. He picked five stones that he knew would fly. He didn't pick one he knew would fly and four others just in case. He picked five stones he knew would fly that in the heat of the battle, he didn't have to have discernment as to which one was right. He had five different young people that he could count on so that in the heat of the moment, if he'd have chose any one of them, they could have got the job done. But you hear me right now. It wasn't so the other four stones could have a pity party in his pockets. And, Why didn't he pick me? I didn't get to do it. I wanted to hit the giant in the head. I wanted to go. Hear me very clearly. We are not in competition with each other. So she can sing and you shoot photos. So he can preach and you cut grass. My question is not, did you kill the giant? My question is, are you usable? Because Brother Gaddy, I threw that stone to him, but I got four more in my pocket right now. They're in here. Marcos, you know I got them. You gave them. You went. And p I got four more. They're so good, I'm not even showing you. They're so sweet, I'm not. I was praying about this. God, why does he only use one? If he's only going to pick, use one, why does he pick five? And it's like the Lord hit me with a little something, and I want everybody in this room to catch this right now. Most stones go home most rocks go home in the pocket of the shepherd the only reason he was having the confidence to fight this giant in public was because there had been a lion and a bear in private and you better listen to the words of this preacher right now as sure as there was a private battle before this public giant there will be more private battles to come I wish it was the case that once you taste of public victory there are no more private battles Let me talk to the pastors in the room. Wouldn't that be a delight? Once we had a public victory, there were no more private battles. Wouldn't it be sweet that once we preached a good message, there would be no more lying tongues on us? Oh, I got a little nervous in the room. Wouldn't it be nice? We wouldn't deal with any more spirits of division. But Goliath is just today's issue. Man, I feel like preaching right now.
David understood something that I need you to understand. And for the next few minutes, I want to liken your pastor unto David. And the same way that David was able to walk off of that battlefield with stones in his pocket that he could take home. I've come to preach to you right now. Your pastor ought to know. Yeah, there might be one every now and then that does end up becoming a preacher. And there might be one every now and then that ends up becoming a public witness but I'm going to need some stones that can be loyal at home with me when there are no public battles to I'm I'm, I'm going to need to be very clear right now I'm going to preach much longer let me be very clear right now there are some of you in this room that are called to ministry and you will end up doing it publicly some of you are called to the mission field And if God tarries, we're going to do PIMs and we're going to send you money and you're going to send us little newsletters and you're going to be in your little foreign outfit. And we're going to love it. And we're going to brag about you. Some of you in this room right now, you're going to be the greatest preachers that Arkansas has ever seen. But hear me right now. Most of you, You got a calling so good. You got a calling so powerful that the shepherd can't even let you out of the pocket. Because while some of them are trying to be public preachers, you're going to go home and be a high school soul winner. While some people are going to have their day in the limelight, you're going to be an apostolic intercessor and nobody's ever going to know your name. Wait a minute, that's not exactly right because every time you start praying, hell is going to start shaking and the enemy of your town is going to start trembling and the terror of your city is going to start revolting because when you... Come on, I'm preaching to somebody in this room right now. You're a rock in the pocket of your shepherd. I'm preaching for young people in this room. I want, man, I feel moved right now. I want you to lift your hands all over the room, all over the room, all over the room. Do not measure yourself by the world's standards and do not measure yourself by Pentecostal popularity. Measure yourself by whether or not you're able to help your shepherd. Hey, will you help me? I want every pastor and youth pastor to come join me on the platform. Run up here or or walk. I know it's going to be full. Come on. Come on, every pastor and youth pastor, let's get up here on the platform for a second. Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, look at this powerful group. These powerful people. We're, brother, brother Gaddy, come up here with me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, guys. Come on, ladies. Come on, leave these pastors. These past- I think we've got to give an applause to these people right here. I got a question for you on their behalf. Are you usable? I'm not asking if you're a good singer. I'm asking, are you usable? I'm asking this, are you really praying? Are you really in the flow? How many churches are there in Arkansas? How many do you want? How many? 
200. In the short, that means we got 36 churches to plant. Woo! That's a lot of giants. But I see a lot of rocks. Here's, but here's the illustration, case in point. 36 sounds like a lot. I'm going to tell you right now, 36 ain't many. For this district, 36 ain't nothing. Man, I feel a Holy Ghost charge right there. Now we're going to have to quit playing games all night long. We're going to have to do a little more praying than playing. But say 36 people in here planted those churches. Pastors, I'm going to talk to you firsthand. Because I have found the toughest part of being a pastor. For me, I'm just being honest. Is letting go of the ones I wish I could keep. I got multiple couples right now that I'm helping give money to send them away. Whole time I'm spinning the sling, I'm thinking, you're stupid. You're stupid. I'm slinging. I'm about to sling. You sure you don't want to stay? I'm talking to the rock. You sure you don't want to stay? It's good here. But I know they're supposed to go. But pastors, I found out like you have. If we'll let them go when we're supposed to. I'm preaching, I'm preaching to some of you right now. I didn't plan on this, but you need to hear me right now. Some of you are wrestling who you're supposed to let go. And you know you're supposed to let them go. I hope I'm okay because I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. If you'll let him go, you listen to me. If you'll let him go, he'll send you a couple you could have never dreamed of. If you'll let him go. If you'll let him go. I've been eating. Justin, Brother Ranking, been one of my closest friends for a long time. We talked about it last night. Recently, I've had to let go of people that I don't want to let go of. Starting these other campuses. So why are you starting these campuses? Because these cities are going to hell. What are we doing? What are we doing? Is this not so that we can build big churches for our own kingdoms? So I got to, I sent, man, I sent some couples. Oh, God, help me. Where's my wife? She knows I'm sent. I looked at our pastoral team and I said, I, I don't want to let them go. But I know that if I will lead with an open hand. They weren't mine. They were his. I had to let them go. But Brother Gaddy, but so if we picked 36 out of this room, even if we pick 36 couples out of this room, look how many stones are going home. If you think that you've got to be a preacher to be a powerful, that's false. For some of you... I, I want to talk to you as a pastor on behalf of the pastors. We just need you to be faithful. We just need you to be usable. Let me preach for them for a minute. I know I've preached too long. I'm sorry. But I'm going to preach for them for a minute. You know what we need you to do? We need you to be spiritually mature enough that we don't have to pray you through every month. Yeah. 
Youth pastors, let me help you right now, right? Because this is the truth. Because some of them are going to send to Bible college. But you listen to me right now. Some of your seniors, you're on the brink of going to university. If you cannot even live for God week to week, don't be mad at him. Don't be mad at her if she says, it'd be better for you to stay home for now. I know that's not I.O. running, but that's real life-saving. I got these... I got these rocks in my pocket. I got these people in the church, brother. Daddy, nobody is ever going to know them. Never going to know them. You guys got them, don't you? You got people in here. No one's ever going to know them. Nobody's ever going to know I don't, I don't even want to say her t- name. But she's up every morning thundering for my family. <laughs> she's never getting a spotlight. She's up in the morning crying my baby's names before God. <laughs> I got one. I got this. I got this faithful older guy. He's this rock called me a little bit ago. Just this rock him up. Nobody. He's never gonna preach. He's never. <laughs> but I wouldn't trade him for a general conference preacher. What are you asking? I'm asking, are you usable? Can your pastor reach into the pocket of his congregation? And when he needs somebody to be at prayer meeting, are you found faithful? When he needs a young person that can lead the charge... What will be the account on that great day? Well done. Thou good and faithful. I'm asking every young person in this room to lift your hands before the Lord. And I'm asking every pastor on this platform to stretch your hands towards this country. I know he's raising some of you to be preachers. He's raising some of you to be evangelists. He's raising some of you to be apostolic music artists. I know he is. I understand. I know he is. But some of you he's raising to be construction workers that never leave your hometown. Some of you he's raising to be the most faithful janitor your church has ever seen. Some of, you, some of you in this room, he's trying to raise you up to be the greatest Sunday school teacher, the greatest nursery teacher. You hear me, young person? We don't need you to save the world. We need you to reach for your neighbor. We need you to stop shouting out things. I'm ready to turn the world upside down and walk across your street and witness to the person next door. We need somebody. You want to know what they really want? They don't want some Instagram hero, my God, trying to be a social media influencer in a hometown joke. I'm sick of that stuff. I'm so sick of that stuff. 
You know what they want? What they need? They need some rocks in the pocket that'll walk into their high school with a P7 club. I'm talking to kids in this room right now. God has stirred your heart over and over and over and over to start a Project 7 Bible Club. And you've used every excuse in the book, but I'm calling you one more time. I'm talking to every young man and every young lady in this room that would say you're called to preach and you haven't taught a Bible study in the last six months. Where are my college students that will get the Holy Ghost tenacity to start a campus? We got universities all over. Our, we got big, yeah, yeah, we need one with the Razorbacks. Yeah, yeah, sure we do. We need one there. We need one in Lafayette. Yeah, we need one in Benton. Yeah, 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 we need one. But we also need one at every community college. I'm sorry, but I'm just a small town kid. I'm so good. I'm okay. I know this is wrong. I, I was just a kid in a town of 800 people. I'm so glad somebody went to that town. No restaurants, no fast food chain. We had a, we had a stop sign. <laughs> we had a train track. No train. <laughs> but we had a church we didn't have a big youth group but I didn't know we had a great preacher and I'm, I'm I am reaching for somebody right now you hear me right now it is not about a name. It is not about popularity. It is not about fame. It is not about fortune. It is about faithfulness. Yes. There's no way we can all get here. I understand that. But if you're a young man, a young lady young person or a young adult in this room that would say, Brother Carson, I don't know what I'm going to be, but I do want to be faithful. There's young people in this room that you've loved them, but God is trying to increase your level of love for your pastor and your pastor's wife. For your youth pastor and your youth pastor's wife. Preaching to what I feel in this room. There are young people in this room. You think they've been holding you back. And they've been trying to keep you from dying. I promise you this. They'll let you go when it's time. But I preach this to you. Be faithful. Be faithful. If you're in this room and you say, I want to be a faithful rock. A faithful stone, a faithful young person. And this world may never know my name, but I'm going to be faithful in my local church. I'm going to be making a difference. Listen, whether you go to a church of 15 or 1,500, well, I'm not a part of a big church. You don't need to be a part of a big church to have a big mindset. If you're here and you want to be found faithful, I want you to come join me at this altar right now. I want you to come stand before our pastors and our youth pastors. I don't want you to kneel. I want you to just come. And if you feel compelled to kneel, you can. But listen, here's what I need you to do. And if it's too warm and you don't want to come or you're nervous or whatever, you don't have to. But if you can. But if you come, press all the way in. Get close to the splash zone. Look at me. I know I listen. I know I've preached too long. I'll try to just preach real short tomorrow night, man. Oh, 
Oh, I feel something stirring now. Ooh, I feel something stirring while you're moving. We don't need more talent. We mean we, we don't need more gifting. We don't need more ability. We need more faithfulness. We don't need you to be able to play better. We don't need you to be able to preach better. We need you to be able to be faithful. Come on, press on in, press on in. I want you to get close enough that when we begin to worship in a moment, that the rocks near you can get the rough edges off you if necessary. You listen to me. If hell can take your faithfulness, he can take everything profitable about you. Man, they won't use me. I'm, I'm a powerful preacher. No, you're not. I don't care how gifted you are. You don't even go to prayer meeting. You haven't, you haven't missed a 6 a.m. basketball practice all semester. You haven't missed one, one shift at work all year. But you haven't fasted one day in the last month. The attack is against our faithfulness. We're rolling, we're, we're roller coaster Christian. We, we're, we have our high highs and then we have our low lows. And God is looking for young people that will just be faithful. I want to be that rock that soars through the meadow. I want to be that in the head of the G I got news for you being in the public eye isn't all it's cracked up to be either some of us on this platform we got all the invitations we ever wanted until we actually got them Pick me, pick me, pick me until you're the one that gets picked. I want you to lift your hands. I don't think we'll do any music for a while. Uh, I know it might not sound like it, but I'm preaching to you on behalf of your city. We got pastors that are overwhelmed, pastors' wives that are frustrated. We, we got attacks against the ministry. And what we need are faithful young people. Pray, 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 pray. I want you to pray. Give me a love for my pastor. Give me a love for my youth pastor. Give me a love for my pastor's wife. Give me a faithful spirit. God, I'm asking you to baptize us with faithfulness. Faith. Come on, I want you to pray until your gut hurts a little bit. I don't want you to pray for anybody else. I want you to pray for you. Help me be faithful. If I've had a bad attitude, forgive me. If I've been unfaithful, forgive me. If I've been contentious, forgive me. If I've been divisive, forgive me.
Pastor, stretch your hands over us. Let's pray. Let's pray. He's after your mind because he's after your faithfulness. He's after your heart because he's after your faithfulness. He's after your thoughts because he's after your faithfulness.